called the absolute value and quadratic inequality. Um, this is in unit three. I believe this is assignment number five. So hopefully we can give you a few examples that will help you out. We're going to start by solving absolute value inequalities. Okay. Now straight from your book, I pulled this little chart here, and it says. <laughs> Some people have trouble reading these, so we're going to do some examples of each one down below. If you have an inequality that says the absolute value of x is less than a number, and the number is between, then we would ch change that to um, putting it between the negative and the positive, or using an and, as I would like to say. Okay, so x is greater than negative c and less than positive c. If your absolute value is less than a number, and that number happens to be less than zero, there's no solution, because an absolute value is always positive, and thus cannot be less than a negative number. If your absolute value is greater than a number, and the number is <clears throat> greater than zero, if it's positive, then you have to remember this is absolute value is a distance, so if your distance is greater than a number, okay, it's either, notice they remove the absolute values here, it's either less than the negative of the number or greater than the positive of the number. And notice they flip the sign here when they set up the negative case. And finally, if x is greater than a number and that number is a negative, it's going to be the solution of all real numbers. Since absolute values are positive, they're always going to be greater than a negative number. Okay, so really what we'll go over solutions for um, the other two cases, but the reason that you'll want to know about this case here and this case here are because it makes your problem really easy to solve. Okay, if an absolute value is less than a negative number, it's no solution. If an absolute value is set greater than a negative number, it's going to be all real numbers. So let's look at some examples how down here, and let's set these problems up. So this first one says the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 4. If we look at our case, it's less than a positive number. That's a possibility. So then we go ahead and we solve that. Okay. Now, it said that if we had a less than, we would set it up like this. So let's do that. x plus 3 is less than, or excuse me, greater than negative 4, and it's less than 4. Now, you can solve these simultaneously. You can set up a separate inequality. That is fine. But if you do it this way, it's a little faster because you solve two at once. So my goal was to isolate the x. I would do that by subtracting 3. I did it to each part, and I got that x is between negative 7 and 4. Now, probably the solutions on your assignment will be written in interval notation, which you do by putting the lower number, comma, the higher ending number. There you go. This means exactly the same thing. It means you're starting at negative 7 and ending at 1. It does not mean a point negative 7, 1 on a graph, okay? Let's look at our next example. It says that the absolute value is less than a negative. Now, remember, absolute values are always positive numbers, okay? Um, so, this one, when is it going to be less than a negative? Never. So this one is no solution. Let's look at our next example here. We have absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 4. When we have a greater than, what did they tell us to do? They told us that it's an or situation. So we set up two individual inequalities. Okay. So less than is an and, and you could squish it between. Greater than is an or, and we have to write down two separate inequalities. We have our original. Notice I removed the absolute values there. x plus 3 is greater than 4. And we have our second possibility. x plus 3 is, you have to flip the sign here and put the negative. Okay. 
then we solve each one of those. So I would have to subtract 3 here to get x by itself. And I get x is greater than 1, or let's go solve the other one. Again, I would subtract 3 from both sides. I get that x is less than negative 7. Okay, well, this would be my solution. x is greater than 1, or it's less than negative 7. Ors can be written separately. What does, what does less than negative 7 look like? That would be from negative infinity to negative 7. We put a little u there, meaning we're joining our groups. That's our or is the little u. x is greater than 1, so it starts at 1 and goes up from there to infinity. This would be the interval notation way of writing your answer. All right, last example down here has the absolute value of x plus 3 greater than negative 4. Well, if you have an absolute value greater than a negative, that's going to happen every time because absolute values are 0 or positive. Okay, so this one is all real numbers. If we wrote that in interval notation, we would say it goes from negative infinity to infinity. We could put any number in there and get a correct solution. <clears throat> All right, let's solve this inequality. So we look at the situation. We don't have a negative there, so it's not going to be a no solution or an all real numbers. But what we do have is the absolute value greater than, okay? I had students who like to say more is an or, okay? So if the absolute value is more than, you have an or problem. So you set up two individual inequalities, the original without the absolute values, and then the negative case, where you flip the sign and you make it negative. You have to do both, okay? I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I get 2x is greater than negative 1, and then I would divide both sides by 2. I get x is greater than a negative 1 half. What would that look like in interval notation? X is bigger than negative one-half. So we would start at negative one-half and go to infinity. Or we have this other situation over here. We're going to go ahead and solve that. So we subtract 3 from both sides. And we get that 2x is less than negative 5. And now we divide both sides by 2. And I get that x is less than negative 5 halves. What would that look like in interval notation? It's less than 5 halves, so it's going to go from negative infinity to negative 5 halves and stop. For our or, we put a little u between them. More is or, okay? More is or. When you have absolute value more than the number, you do the or. You set up the two cases on the negative case. You make the number negative here, and you flip the direction of the sign. Next problem. The absolute value of 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 1. This is not an or. It's not more. It's less than. Less than is an and. More is an or. If it's less than, our instructions were to put it in between the positive and the negative case. You can also do those separately and write the word and, but then you just have to remember to join them back together when you get to the end. Okay? I'm going to solve this. I want to isolate the x in the center here. So just like I would on any equation, to get rid of a negative 4, I add 4. But just notice you have more than just one place to add it to. We have three sections. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And 1 plus 4 is 5. Now, I, again, just like say, solving a regular inequality, I want to get x by itself here. So I divide by 3. But I have to divide each section by 3 to keep it balanced. 3 divided by 3 is 1. In the middle, I have x left. And over here, I have 5 thirds. So my solution is that x is between 1 and 5 thirds. 
to write that in interval notation, which is the way the book seems to be writing things. We put our starting point, comma, ending point. And we only had one answer here, so we don't have to join it with a U. Why did I put square brackets this time instead of parentheses? Because of the equal to. If it's equal to the number, you put a square bracket. If it's simply less than or greater than, you go ahead and put a parenthesis on the outside. So there we go. There's our answer.